right, I'm going to uh, continue. Um, not going to do much more on this guy here. I think I will finish off his leggings. That won't take long. Um, I'm thinking about starting another figure. I want to work out several ideas before I head out to uh, Colorado. I told a young lady down in Texas, Teresa is her name, she uh, got a pasta machine because I recommended it, and she's been having trouble with it bubbling and, and uh, double layering and all that stuff, and that's because uh, the, the temperature of the clay has to be almost perfect. Um, right now this is lukewarm, it's uh, just soft enough to work, not too hot, not too cold, just perfect, and it still may not work. But I roll it into the uh, roller, and hopefully it'll come out fine, and it is. Um, you don't want the clay too hot, and you don't want the clay too cold, because if you get it too hot or too cold, uh, it uh, won't work. And that's uh, how you get uh, the clay flattened out. It's a real handy tool to have this. And if I wanted to make fringe, I would just change it out and uh, put it through the pasta cutter. And I do it slowly, I don't do it fast. Just uh, slowly through, and I'd show you what it looks like coming out, but I can't. All I can do is show you the end product, and uh, you can use that for fringe, or uh, you know, or strings. You know, you can use it for a lot of things. Uh, you get it's got the wider cutter too. I'll cut out uh, some of that, and I'll show you. cuts wider strips. Not sure the type of uh, I think it's fettuccine, but I don't know. But it cuts wider strips. It just makes it even cut and they're all the same thickness. And uh, this kind of stuff can be used for a lot of things. Alright, let's get busy on the clay now. And I'm going to use uh, this clay that I just rolled through on my warrior here and uh, make some legging flats for it. Now the blanket's wrapped around there so that will force the uh, legging to go under the blanket and I'm just going to cut that at the same angle. the uh, Indians would do is they take the trade cloth and uh, they would uh, just wrap it around the leg and, and sew it t t tightly or loosely to the shape of the leg and then what was left over was a decorative flap that they would have on the leg itself and they would put uh, brass tacks and, and things like that on it. So that's on that legging and now create a legging for this part of the leg here and uh, that will go underneath the uh, blanket as well so let's just cut it. Yeah. That's just to show me what it looks like. That's going to be pretty much it for this piece. Um, it's a, a short uh, little trip on this one. And now I'm going to take, I got, a, got some great photographs of uh, these Indians, uh, I'm not sure, I think they were Paiute or something. Anyway, Pawnee, whatever. And they 
were completely covered in blankets. I thought that's kind of a neat design. And that might be worth trying to do. I don't know. <clears throat> Love that guy's face. This is a painting by uh, Charlie Russell. And I love it. It's a painting of a Blackfoot Indian standing, or a blood, standing outside a trading post. And I've always loved the figure. Uh, he's got a um, Hudson Bay blanket coat hanging off his shoulder. Uh, his uh, rifle, which, uh, or musket or whatever it is, because it's not a Winchester. You can see it's got a uh, percussion uh, trigger or even a, a flintlock uh, on it. It's been cut off for use on a horseback. Uh, it's much easier to swing around a short rifle than a long one. And he's got his powder horn on, which means this is a black powder gun. And he's wearing it, or carrying it, by pushing it through his belt. And I always thought that was kind of neat looking. Now, as you can see, I've got a true form armature, human uh, shaped uh, armature. And it's about a 36 inch tall armature. I'm not going to use this. I'm just showing you. <laughs> His arm just fell off. Uh, I just uh, wanted to show you the uh, armatures. And it's pretty much the same as the armature that I'm going to use putting the arm back on. That's one of the beauties of these things. Is you can take work on the arm separate by just pulling it off. Anyway, I'm going to stick this back here. Here's the same armature, uh, except it's a 24 inch tall figure. And it might be just a little bit big for what I want to do. I think I'm... We got a 12 inch one, but I can't find one in the studio and I thought I had an extra 12 incher, but I don't. So, uh, this is one I started a long time ago. It's been sitting in the back of the studio, waiting for me to figure out what to do with it. <sighs> do I want to use this? Hmm. Well, I'll come back when I can figure that out. Alright, I'm heading uh, over to one of my client's homes. And... Uh, She's back from vacation and I borrowed that bronze from her to show a client who never showed up. And uh, so I'm heading out to her house. Uh, she lives on a, on a farmhouse, yeah, in a farmhouse, uh, southwest of, or southeast of town, up in a canyon called Bear Canyon. It's uh, a bit of a drive, but it's a pretty drive. It's one of the first ranches uh, you know, in this valley, it goes back to, uh, I believe, the either the early eight, 1900s or the uh, late 1800s. Traffic is building now that the summer vacation has started, and uh, from our stand, Yellowstone Park is packed with people. Madison River now that's uh, that's it right there it's turned at Cameron which is a little town and um, heading towards her house I hope I can remember how to get there that mountain there is called the Sphinx and uh, there are big horn sheep up there climbing around the cliff face kind of cool.
right, there's the Sphinx from almost at the foot of it. This is up in Bear Canyon, and it got its name for a particular reason. And uh, I'm going to have to call it quits tonight, head home, and get the video up for you. And then I'll see you guys in the studio tomorrow with maybe a better idea of what I'm going to do. Good night.